so quiet. I was just in the, I was just in Holland for for two weeks and they were so quiet every night it was it was like church. And they took notes. No I'm kidding. And I kidding, they took notes. It was it was one of the most charming things I've ever seen at the merch table. Was there a quiz? Or? I, I didn't think there was a quiz or a test, but they all took notes and they came up and they checked their notes at the merch table. Mm -hmm. It was the sweetest thing I ever saw. The last gig was actually in a church, and I had to walk through a 500-year-old graveyard to get to the stage. It's two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon and I was singing all these Waylon Jennings songs. <laughs> I know, it was rough. It was the hardest gig I've ever done. It's kind of like a Monty Python skit. <laughs> and they're very old. <laughs> and I was looking out of the gravestones over their heads. I know, and I thought, <laughs> I finally said, you know, these are Saturday night songs, so I feel a little uncomfortable <laughs> singing them on Sunday in a church. <laughs> They, they didn't they didn't seem to get the humor. <laughs> they did ask me to speak English just a little bit slower and stop singing so loud. <laughs> it was a tough kid. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we're going to make this show up as we go. So, so uh, this is a song, uh, this is a new song. I haven't recorded it yet. And uh, um, I... Well, here it goes. It's called Wasted Time. <coughs> sticks it and was playing on this thing and we thought that sounded so good that we should just do the show that way. It was kind of great. All right, well here's a song from the Geronimo record and uh, it's still one of my favorite of my catalog. Here you go.
in a scene by himself. He's looking, looking, looking at the books right on the shelf. So I point out diaper 42, yeah, line 17. It's a graph of intimidating. Is this what you mean? And I feel so bad, I feel so sad. You know, I told me that I would. I never learned nothing about the heart, but it was at the time it was so good. Well, Also, uh, we may or may not have been watching Batman while we were re rehearsing. <laughs> Got pretty dark there. Watch the Batman. I, I honestly didn't see much of Batman, but it was definitely on. The only problem with this setup is I can't quite reach my mind. Just, you know, it's a little far out of reach, and it's going to involve a little yoga move. <laughs> Last year, I put um, a, a record of all Waylon Jennings songs out. Uh, yes, inadvertently, I spent the entire pandemic with Waylon Jennings. So it was fantastic. It was brilliant, really. It was the best decision I ever made. 
hit the pandemic from being completely pandemic-y. <laughs> and uh, oh, you know, I was scared shitless when I when I when <laughs> I was very bold until I stu stood up at the microphone the first day in the in the studio to to make the record, and. Uh, I thought, when the first day I asked, stood up at the microphone, I thought, this is the dumbest thing I've ever decided to do. And then when we finished recording, I thought, no, this is brilliant. I love this. But I was there. <laughs> they were big shoes to sort of swim in. This is my favorite song on the record. There's a lot of great songs on the record. But, uh, this is also one that uh, Waylon wrote. Waylon only wrote about a third of his uh, songs. He uh, ascribed to the, the theory that made the best song win and I think that's a very good, I like that position, because not every song you write is good, or as good as something else, so there's great songs out there that should live forever, and this is one of them. Ready? <laughs> Brady was born ready. You can, you can not, you can, you can live, there's no moment where Brady's not ready. Love that. That's it. to invite uh, Buck Allen up to the stage. Is he here? There he is. Buck is going to come play a little uh, accordion. Alright. Hi. Seeing you involves a yoga move, but... <laughs> I can hear you. Good thing I did my yoga today. You know, the yoga uh, studio was right behind the, the pool deck. So I felt a little silly watching all y'all out there drinking your beers and having fun. I was in there doing my yoga. <coughs> was good though. All right, well, this is a song from the Black Irish record that I did with Rodney Crail. And, um, yeah. yeah. Well, I love this song very much. And, um, here you go. That's how it goes. <laughs>
record um you know rodney and i had talked about making that record for a few years before we finally made it and um uh, when we got real close to making the record uh, he recommended a song by suzanne clark and uh, which you know what in most venues i would go into a long description of who suzanne clark was but in this particular venue i'm gonna skip to the punchline which is really nice so this is a song of Susanna's that she wrote for Janice. Yeah. 
chances entitled to do It's one of the hearts that's too late to break I've seen him be sad and never know why That's all right. 
like to find myself trapped. Some desert town with you, just me and you, just me and you. Yeah. six months ago and she can sit on a stool like nobody I've ever seen and I've been I wish I'd taken a picture of it because I don't know what she was doing but it was perfect and I thought how did she practice that she's done that that's pure experience right there she knows how to sit on a stool and play guitar anyway I'm working on it uh, her set was just magnificent at the run and the most one of the most beautiful things I ever saw but uh, but anyway, I, I did. I moved to North Mississippi, and uh, they play very loud guitar there. Uh, which was really nice, because um, they, they drink a lot of moonshine, and they play a lot of guitar, and uh, really they're volume junkies, is what they are. Uh, and um, first thing, uh, the first thing that happened when I was in a live environment was somebody just went right over to my amp and by the end of the night, all the knobs were on 10. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have gone to 11 if they went to 11. <laughs> but you couldn't get loud enough. Couldn't get drunk enough, couldn't get loud enough. And um, I don't live there anymore. I moved to Nashville and you can definitely get drunk enough and loud enough and out of tune enough in Nashville. But you can't in Mississippi. It's a polar opposite, really. Yeah, yeah. And uh, neither one of them are entirely wrong. Anyway, I, um, I did. A, I wrote some songs with a friend of mine named Gary Burnside. And Gary uh, is the the youngest of our old Burnside's thirteen children. <laughs> Which you know he did it the old fashioned way. They all have the same mama. So, you know, you know, they're, they're just like the Irish, the Catholics. They're not Catholics, they're Baptists, but they're Catholics. They, they just have lots of babies. I'm from New York. I'm allowed to talk about Catholics and Protestants. I'm also Irish. My father was baptized twice, one of each. <laughs> they could not decide. 1940, 1943 in New York City, there was a little war going on. But um, anyway, I, I, that's, a, that's got nothing to do with this story. <laughs> the story is that I moved to North Mississippi and I started I was singing a lot of songs with the Burnsides and um, I wrote the song with Gary Burnside who might be my favorite of the bunch. He's one of the most beautiful guitar players in the state of Mississippi. And uh, here it goes, let's see how this goes. <laughs>
because we get to see all the people that we love in for more than like 15 minutes coming and going in and out of the club and we're actually all here for a few days and you might see him in the coffee line. I stood behind David Hidalgo waiting for his eggs this morning and that made my day. I love when Shannon don't talk to him, it's the first thing in the morning, just leave him alone. But I was kind of like, oh hey, he's getting eggs too, that's so cool. <laughs> Shaver story because we're here and it's a Billy Joe Shaver song. But uh, I met Billy Joe Shaver uh, at dawn at the Alamo. Where else would you meet him, really? I mean, if you had to meet him for the first time somewhere, 
at dawn at the Alamo would kind of be the place to meet him. I had a friend named Reverend Goat Carson, uh, who has since passed on to the great beyond. But Reverend Goat Carson called me when I was living in New Orleans, and he said, yeah. and Reverend Goat Carson was one of those people who, like, 50% of the time was completely full of malarkey, and the other 50% of the time was dead on awesome, accurate, and shaman, pure shaman. But the other 50% of the time was there was a little bit of malarkey going on. Um, because prayer sessions had to be done naked. In fact, he said, well, I don't pray. I'm sorry, dude. I'll be back. But, <laughs> I don't know. He tried. But he called me one day. <laughs> he wore all red leather, uh, head to toe, no shirt, little red leather vest. And, and you could see all his bones and his, and his real skinny and he had long hair. And he wore all this mojo around his neck. And he was just perfect in so many ways. And he called me up one, one day and he said, Shannon, um, I have a situation. And I said, what's up, Goat? <laughs> he said, well, my friend Kinky Friedman is going to run for governor of Texas. And he's announcing his gubernatorial campaign at dawn at the Alamo on Wednesday. <laughs> and I said, well, that, what's, what's wrong with that? That sounds like fun. He says, well, I need a ride. And I said, well, you know, it's a long drive from New Orleans to San Antonio. Are you asking me to take you? And he said, yes, I am. And I said, well, all right, I'll take you, because that kind of sounds like fun. Yeah. So I took him, and, uh, you know, we all got up at dawn. We got there the night before. We got up at dawn, and we went to the Alamo across the street. We're in the hotel right there in the plaza, and um, they did... Kinky did his thing on, on, on the Don Imus show at dawn on, at, at the Alamo. And it was the first time I'd been to the Alamo, so it was kind of exciting. And uh, then we all went inside for cake and donuts and coffee. And uh, I, was, I thought the day had peaked, really. And really, I mean, how could it get better than that? Except there was this tall, handsome gentleman in the back of the room with long white hair and all denim shirt and denim pants. And, and he was smiling at me, and smiling at me, and smiling at me, and smiling at me, and smiling some more. And eventually he walked over and said, you're as cute as a warm cuddle pup on a red lady. <laughs> Would you like a donut? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> You remember that one, write that one down, baby. <laughs> How many people here have been on this cruise of a few years? Yeah. Remember the year that uh, Billy Joe was supposed to be on it and he didn't go on it? Why is it on it? And they called me and go, and how was it? go, well, it was fun, but Billy Joe didn't come. And I was like, well, what happened? He goes, well, he drove all the way here from Waco with a band. He got to the dock, he fired the band, he got back in the truck and drove home. <laughs> I said, well, that's what you get when you book an owl on the fucking owl walk cruise. <laughs> <laughs> it's a press for a Highly professional. <laughs> uh, I tried to hire Billy Joe one time. Me and, me and, uh, uh, uh me and Ramsey Midwood. Oh yeah. We tried to bring him. We and I, we we called him. We made him a deal. We said, Hey, hey, how about you come to Austin and uh, we'll back you up. We'll pay you, you know, a few thousand dollars. We'll, we'll pick you up at the door. We'll be the band. We will bring you home after the show. Y'all gonna play ten songs. And uh, it would seem to be going all right for a little while. And then he called back and said, Oh shit, I'd rather pay a few thousand dollars not to have to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Too shy. So. <laughs>
the lead, the last I figure, I've, I've been trying to, I could never make a decision between country and blues. Now I'm just going to do both. Yeah. 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 I ain't picking a side, God damn it. There they are, the same, it's the same 12 notes. Well, I, um, <laughs> that was really fun. That was really, really fun. All right. Um, Y'all doing all right? I know you have lots of places you could otherwise be, so thank you very much for being here with us right now. Yeah, a few more songs. Um, um, How are you on time? I have no sense of time whatsoever. Well, our dear friend, right. the captain of the hook, Miss Captain yeah. Hook. 20 minutes. Oh, 20, 20 minutes. minutes. All right, all right. Yeah. That's good. Let's go, then let's go right ahead on to uh, all these blues. I think so. I think we should do four songs. One of my favorite human beings that uh, I've ever met on, on, on planet Earth, Joe Harvey, too. And I'd like to thank them for uh, having me out here this weekend. And I'd like to thank the Outlaw Cruise for having me in general and playing the shit out of that Waylon Jennings record and giving me a reason to live. So, yeah. I'll let you start.
me take the tuning on my new tuner. <laughs> You know, the last time I remember seeing Billy Joe with you, sorry, I can't, she was almost through that. I said, like, a million things popping in my head. I'm like, just be quiet. But <laughs> I remember we walked up and we and uh, he was back. I go, I looked at Billy Joe. And we were just kind of, he was in the middle. He was hospitable. And he was in the middle of hospitable and, and something else. <laughs> but uh, after he said, I said, hey, Billy Joe, it's good to see you. And he goes, well, it's better to be seen than viewed. <laughs> He said he was right, but, uh, <laughs> but you know, he was always good for uh, <clears throat> some good perspective. Line, yes. Well, that's why he was going to be the poet laureate of Texas. Kinky Freeman that won the gubernatorial campaign. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> I got the there will be no declawing of cats in the state of Texas. <laughs> Which I completely agree with. You know, I have no reason to declog yet. Don't don't do it. It's not nice. All right. Well, uh, we have a few more songs for you, and this has been so incredibly pleasant. I just want to say thank you very much for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to uh, try? try this? You want to do um, in your place call? Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's the funny thing uh, about songs and how they kind of travel around and your friends know them and they just kind of get passed along. Rewritten and, or just been shared. And, uh, we did this song because uh, we were making a little record together. Without the details of it, we needed some other songs. Mm -hmm. And like, she said, well, I think that it would be a shame if we didn't do a talent song. And I said, okay. I was just thinking in my head real quick, like, what are you I said, oh, I know. And it just so happened that a year or two before that, Butch Hancock had done, and I was aware of the song, but I had a CD before I was figured out to actually find out things without going to my truck, you know, on my CD. <laughs> anyway, Butch had given me the song because we played together at a town center. And um, so in a roundabout way, we kind of from Butch. Not really, but... Thanks, Butch. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'll let you play it. Do it, do it, do it. Right. I'll ghost you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, that's all.
sit through this for a second while I retune, which is the worst thing in the world. And I do apologize in advance. But, but it's only half as bad if she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I have to tell a story, Charlie, of, of one of the, one of the, when I, the very, maybe not the first night I met you, but maybe the second night I met you, you were working with Bob Dylan. <laughs> I went well because I tell this story every time I tune a guitar because Sir Bob, I was back there and he said, "Hey, uh, why don't you play me a song? I might have heard." Oh, that one. Yeah, I picked the first story. You no, know, I won't tell him the first story. And then uh, <laughs> this is not important. And I picked up the guitar and I was nervous. We had a small audience. Yeah, the thing at the we were at Mass, Madison Square Garden, backstage at Madison Square Garden, and Bob said, "Hey, why don't you play me something you know, I, I might have heard?" And I got a little. I picked up the. He said, "You can play this." He said, "Do you have a guitar with you?" I said, "No, no, I don't." And uh, I'm at your show at Madison Square Garden. I didn't bring the guitar. I wasn't playing my shit. It's funny when I walked over today with this guitar, just I said, "I'm gonna do it like you know in the old days in the village, you just go to." The, the square. You just carry it. No one had a case. You didn't have a case. Like, oh, do you want a case? You know, your bicycle or your motorcycle or a walk. Just put it on the back. Mm -hmm. anyway, you bring a guitar. No, well, I brought a piano. I, I didn't bring. <laughs> I brought a piano, but I did not bring a guitar. Anyway, he says, "Will I play that one over there?" So I picked it up and had a nervousness. I adjusted the tuning, and he looked at me and he said, "It's in tune." <laughs> So I hate tuning guitars. I really do. It's even more embarrassing. I played him a song of mine because all I could think of were his songs at the time and I wasn't going to blame one of his. He said, so play me something in C. And then he said, well, I can play one of my songs. He goes, okay, but just a verse of the chords. <laughs> Just a person of course. So yeah, he did have a show to do, so to be fair. Yeah, yeah he did. He was busy. <laughs> it was his idea though. Anyway, you no, know, it, it was sweet. It, it ended very quite quite sweetly because I played him. I, all I could think of was my song. It's called John Finch, and it kind of has a hang down your head Tom Dooley kind of thing. And I played it, and he said, oh, they're, it's like the Kingston Trio. <laughs> you ever heard of them? <laughs> and, I had. and then I wanted to die and be done with it. How about Brady Blaze back there on the... Woo! I recently did a whole tour of Sweden with Brady Blaze. That's where he lives. And, uh, oh, yeah. It was fantastic. He lives on one of the... Copenhagen. We, yeah, well, we didn't just do Sweden. We did Scandinavia. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But so we did, uh, we did uh, Stockholm. Uh, Copenhagen and uh, Oslo, Oslo. Oh. And, and, and it was fantastic and he lives on this gorgeous island where only like ex-CIA live. <laughs> <laughs> 
like Maine. It's just like CIA and seals and whales. <laughs> <laughs> and very sweet children who have to ride a boat to school. Okay. Alright, well, um, we're going to do, uh, maybe we're going to do sort of one little, uh, what do you call this, a, a, a medley. This is a medley. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. My name is Shannon McNally, and this has been a great honor and pleasure to sing for you. Yeah. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Allen for sitting in earlier yeah. on, on the yeah. Rock, Charles Simpson, of course. Yeah. And you've met Brady Blades and. Uh, and uh, uh, this is Steve Earle's song, so uh, we love Steve. Yeah. Steve. So I, I, I don't have a favorite Steve song. I, I like them all. It's impossible to pick. But uh, this one just sort of floated to the top. I don't know how it got there. It just kind of floated to the top.